So why would you choose Moodle for your organisation? Well, we while I find the right notes. For us, it was a pretty easy choice and it was mostly because we were already using Moodle for our student facing system. So if you've already got experience in running Moodle platforms and you've got developers and administrators, then this might be the right choice for you because you haven't got to learn a new system. But we also found that that was helpful in terms of sustainability of the Open Learn product project because we weren't asking for more money to do extra things. We could just keep this inside what we were already doing as part of our core business. You might also, like us, think that open content should be hosted on open source software and it's just simply a part of the ethos of being open that you would want to do that. Or perhaps you've just read all of those key uh, features of the site and you think, Moodle just does the right job. It's easy to set up and it gives me the basics that I need. Um, and that's quite often just that it's simple to use. It's a good choice for people. I wouldn't be alone. I asked, before I wrote these slides, I asked Mina and Clay from the Open Courseware Consortium who already uses Moodle. And the list was so long I couldn't fit everybody on these slides. So apologies if you're watching this out there and your project that's an Open Courseware in Moodle isn't on this list. They just didn't all fit. And I was amazed at the number of people that were doing this. So there's plenty of sources of support out there if you're interested. When you first install Moodle, it sets itself up as if you're going to be charging for courses and registering students and knowing who their tutors are going to be. And so there are a few key changes that you will probably want to make in order to make your site more suitable for open courseware. And the key ones are, are these on the screen here. Um, Self-service, basically so that people can enrol themselves on courses and register on your site on their own without any administration being involved. And also allowing search engines into the site and extending what guests and self-registered people can do through those permission structures that we looked at just a moment ago. So that's, these screenshots here show you roughly what that looks like. The top one is the registration form, form for a teacher training site that I also run here. And the bottom half is the self-enrolment onto a course screen. And there's no payment, it's simply a click here to join button. There are other things, of course, that you will want to add to make the most of your open courseware in Moodle. Uh, one is to make it look really nice with an enticing graphic design. And you're going to want to do things to make sure that your site is well found by search engines. We upload uh, a sitemap to Google, for example, once a week. Um, and you might well want to use redirects to make the horrible looking Moodle URLs much more friendly and keyword rich because that encourages search engines to promote them further up the listings. It's also a good idea to create RSS feeds of all of your course materials. And this will uh, allow you to provide your RSS feeds of courses into OER aggregation services like OER Recommender and CC Learn, so that your materials can be found with all of the others. Um, Moodle doesn't do any of these things for free, unfortunately, at the moment, um, but the RSS feeds are coming in Moodle 2.0, and I'll talk a little more about that in just a moment. And finally, the other thing that Moodle isn't is a production system, and so you're probably going to want some kind of process and systems in place for getting your materials from your authors and onto your Moodle platform. Okay, so this is an example of the range of graphic designs that are out there. Um, and I did this quickly off of the uh, list of open courseware sites that use Moodle already. One of the um, complaints that you often hear about Moodle is, all the sites look the same, don't they? Well, I think this clearly shows that they don't. So some of these looked so unlike Moodle that I actually had to dig quite deep to make sure that they were really Moodle sites before I put them on the screen. And I was quite impressed with the range of designs available. Now, there are a few extensions that I'd like to recommend to you that you could just install into the basic Moodle product that are really, really good for open courseware. 
One of them is the Open Share module, which was created by Jared Stein at Utah Valley. And this allows you to declare on an asset by asset basis inside each course the license for each piece of material and its level of openness, which is open or closed, obviously. And that, because you can do that on an asset by asset basis, you can include your open materials right alongside your standard course materials all on the one platform, which makes maintenance a good deal easier for you. And the other useful extension is the course ratings block, which is a sort of five-star Amazon-style approval so that your uh, users can tell each other which are the best courses on your site. And this is one that I created, so we have this one on OpenLearn. Um, or I should have said as well, actually, in terms of useful extensions, a, a bit brief pre preview of what's coming soon in Moodle 2.0. Um, Moodle 2 will be released sometime this year. There's no clear date for it yet. And one of the things that we've contributed are the RSS lists of courses, so that that's much more useful for uh, open course websites. But there's also a concept called community hubs, which is being built. And this is really key for open course, where it's somewhere we can really participate. Because the idea is it's a place where teachers can share their courses with each other. Um, and the whole interface that's being built allows you to publish your courses from your Moodle onto the community hub and make them available for others. And finally, I'd just like to mention the Moodle demo site, which is at demo.moodle.net. Um, and that's got a cool course competition running at the moment. And all of those courses have been licensed under Creative Commons. OK, so that's enough of me talking. Um, if you want to continue thinking about Moodle for your open courseware, then there are two real key places to get help. One is the Open Courseware Consortium, which have an RC expert service or at conferences, and there's plenty on their website with uh, technical help. Or you can use the Moodle community, um, and there are forums there, general developer forums, use, uh, using Moodle forums. Um, I hang out in both these places, so if you're asking Open Courseware questions, I'll tend to pick them up. I'm going to stop talking now and ask if anyone has any questions or comments about your use of Moodle that I'd really like to hear.